Hello, this is Cuckoo and I'm at uh, Superbooth 16 and right at this company called Loitech. They have this very little synth, you see the square up there, it's called Pile Squared. And this is Mark, the developer from the synthesizer, right? Yeah. Hi, Cuckoo. Yeah. Hi. Are you, do you want to keep it? Yeah, yeah I can take it. Oh, yeah. do you want to hold it? No, okay, no. excellent. Yeah, okay. So, excellent meeting you. And uh, I would like to show our small synth. It's uh, probably the smallest synth in the world. I mean, we see a lot of stuff here, but the, the, the synth is, is this. So it's probably the smallest synth in the world as it comes to synthesizers. With a housing, I've, I've seen smaller PCBs only, but this, this comes with a real housing. And uh, so let, let me show you some basic sounds. So this one, can I put the microphone on the side maybe. It's a basic pulse wave with the filter. And uh, we, we can do different sounds like an organ. Or this cembalo. And uh, all the sounds are generated from pulse waves. So if I change the pulse waves, you can see how the sound changes. This is the idea of the synthesis used in this module, and it's pretty unique in what it does. It's all from pulse waves, so we can do soft strings, or even nice synth sounds. We have uh, distorted sounds like this one. I don't know what to film. You know, the only thing making the sound is this tiny box. So I should really be filming like like this when, when the sound, you know, yeah, listen to what it sounds like. But it makes more sense to film you while you're playing, you know. But you, you can set up uh, any controller to, co to speak with it. And it has a, uh, some different uh, memory for storing patches, right? Yeah, we have 32 ROMs, 32 user presets, and the MIDI controllers are fully assignable to match your gear. Even if you cannot change controllers on your keyboard, you still can assign the PL square to match to whatever you want to hook it up to. Yeah, and you mentioned to me that it has got like a, like different versions of the firmware with different styles. Was that it? Or you, you showed me like the speech synthesis before. Yeah, we have actually currently three different versions of firmware. The original one, the first update, the second update, which introduced the drum mode, which I quickly show. It's yeah. So we can do drums, tune the bass drum, change the bass drum, change the hi-hat. And there's also alternative firmwares like the speech synthesis. So I already set it up into this one. Yeah. And uh, here we emulate the SP0256 AL2 from General Instruments from 1985, the year of Back to the Future. Yeah. And yeah. what we do is fully compatible, so you can use all the old resources oh. to generate yeah. speech from here. Yeah. And I, I just do something randomly. And I can change the note. <laughs> can change the sound, the speed, and even the pulse width of the sound. Now there's several play modes and uh, if I change the play mode, I can flip it so I pick the allophone on the mod wheel and at the same time play like on a keyboard. And if you are disturbed by the consonants, you can get rid of them by another play mode. Okay, well, very cool. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how it's built? I mean, how it's configured and, and about how the waveforms are generated? So it's all pulse waves, but there are seven different waveforms to uh, do the pulse waves. For example, you can have 
one long pulse and two short pulses or you can have up, middle, down, middle and stuff like that and there's always independent control with the pulse width controls one and two so you change the sound by turning those knobs and picking the waveform you want to use and so you can get all this variety of sounds just from analog pulse waves so we don't use any wavetables we don't use blips it's just analog pulse waves going through a digital filter it's a state variable filter running at 125 kilohertz sample rate from there we go to the crusher for all the distortion if we want any then we have an analog filter which is important for bass sounds and then the saturation and audio out how much memory do you have to work with when you're you know like ram memory and uh, <laughs> to store the patches and everything yeah, actually it's a tiny chip, but we managed to get 32 ROMs and 32 user presets. And you can either set those up at the keyboard, so if you pick a user preset... Oh no, it's the wrong stuff. <laughs> yeah, so if you pick a user preset and... You make any changes like I put a long release and close the filter and now I go to a different preset and go back to the earlier one and memorizes all my changes I did and of course I can also use the computer editor and even save the sounds to the hard drive, send it to my friends use a random sound generator to yeah. be creative or whatever. Yeah, I think it sounds very interesting. And and there is also a, a bigger version of this in uh, in the making, right? Yeah, we, Are you involved in that or how is it working? Yeah, sure. We, we worked on a new version where we replaced the resonance by a resonator. And uh, you, you find from the bass sound that it sounds a little different. This is preset one, the analog bass on the new firmware. It sounds more like a bass guitar. So old firmware, new firmware. And with the resonator firmware, we can do um, formant sounds also. So that's the latest edition and there's more to come of course so we will keep it updated and keep our customers happy <laughs> and do our best yeah. so you, you can have a lot of fun with this. And the, the Pi L Square and the Pi Dirty, are the, will they run the same operating system? Yeah sure, the Dirty Pi is actually a licensed version of the Pi L Squared. So it sounds exactly the same, but it gives you knobs and control over things, and yeah. you can even connect the second one on the MIDI output. So when you update the, the small one, you could also use that update on the, on the dirty? Yep. Yeah, great. It will be fully compatible. You can put all the updates in, change all the stuff. So obviously the, the convenience with the, the bigger one is that you've got knobs and con can control it. Uh, whereas on, on the smaller one you need uh, an external synthesizer or a keyboard or a <laughs> controller to control it or a computer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or an iPad. Yeah, or an iPad. Have you got a, your own app for that? Yeah, there's yeah. an iPad app also. That's great. Okay, cool. Well, I really like the sound. I mean, I saw the Dirty, the, the pre-production model of the Dirty on, on NAMM and I had this I, th I thought it sounded like, sounded different. It had this lush f overtones and also, yeah, I don't know. It sounds, it sounds cool, <laughs> biting and cool. I don't know how to put it. I'm glad you like it. So the whole idea is it never sounds clean. Yeah. It's always a little dirty. Yeah, yeah. And it can be very dirty or yeah. a little dirty, but not clean at the end. But you also showed that it could be very, very beefy. And that kick drum you showed me, that is surprisingly, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't understand that it's only created by three, uh, 
you know, levels in the waveform. Yeah, I mean, it's a very simple bass drum, but very effective and yeah. it has a lot of punch. So Yeah, well, cool. Thank you for showing me this. I'll uh, probably make uh, a, little, a more... Uh, a, a little demo of this myself uh, because I, I got one now and I'm very happy to show you more about how, it, how to use it. And one thing we uh, forgot to mention is that it is powered by the uh, MIDI, MIDI bus. So you don't need any power, it just gets power over MIDI, which surprised me. Actually, there's two versions. The black one runs on MIDI power. It uh, works with almost any keyboard. We have a list on the website listing all the tested gear and also the non-working gear and there's a white one which runs on USB yeah. and the white one has a MIDI out so it can drive a black one or any other synthesizer. That's great. Brilliant. Yeah. Let me show you my favorite feature. Oh yeah, do it. I personally I use it a lot for bass playing and the real bass players go up and down with their fingers and us keyboarders have to double the speed and I hate it yeah, if yeah. I do it for hours. So using the mod wheel, I can bring in a feature that it makes another attack when I release the key. Oh, yeah. So if you rehearse that you get the 50-50 cycle, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can play like a real bass player. I only play this. Yeah. And if I turn on the mod wheel, I get this Great. and can play punk rock all night long. Yeah, yeah, I can play really fast. <laughs> well, cool, thank you so much. I'll uh, make sure to, to send you a message when, when I make another video with this. It's so, you know, since it's so, this is probably the smallest synthesizer I've ever seen, apart from it. No, it's smaller than an iPhone. <laughs> it is, it's not as flat, but it's actually smaller in a way. <laughs> yeah, cool. Well. That's it for now. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers from Super Proof. See you next year, hopefully, here in Berlin. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah.